This is Matt Bach with Puget Systems, and today we're going to be talking about how the Mac Pro compares to PC workstations, specifically in Premiere Pro 2017. Now, we recently completed a whole round of testing where we looked at these two types of workstations in Premiere Pro across rendering previews, exporting, performing a warp stabilize, and just general live playback performance. And if you want to view the full results of our testing, we have our article linked down in the description. But in this video, we're going to kind of look at the highlights of our testing. Now one thing to be aware of is that on the Mac Pro, you can use either Metal or OpenCL for the Mercury playback engine, and we actually did test with both. But in this video, we're going to be only talking about OpenCL because we found that to be much more consistent than Metal. Metal was a little bit faster in some situations, but in others, especially things like live playback, it was quite a bit slower. Real quick, we just want to go over the specs of the Mac Pro and the PC workstations we're going to be looking at in this video. Starting with the Mac Pro, we're looking at the top of the line system. It has the 12 core CPU, 64 gigs of DDR3 ECC memory, dual FirePro D700 video cards, along with a one terabyte PCIe based flash storage. And this system retails for $9,399. Now our first PC workstation comes in at just over half the cost of the Mac Pro. It has an eight core CPU that's two generations newer than the one in the Mac Pro, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, it has a GeForce GTX 1080 video card and a one terabyte NVMe storage drive. And currently we sell this system for $4,930. Our second PC workstation has hardware that is among the best possible for Premiere Pro. It has a 10 core CPU, 128 gigs of DDR4 memory, a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, and one terabyte of NVMe storage. We currently sell this system for $6,422, which is just around two thirds the cost of the Mac Pro. Now one thing we want to point out is that typically we would actually recommend using a three drive setup on our PC workstations. Uh, one hard drive for your operating system and software, a second drive for your media cache and scratch files, and then a third drive for your project files and source media. However, since the Mac Pro can only have a single internal drive, we decided to match that limitation on our PCs to make everything fair. So let's talk about performance. Starting with rendering previews, you can see in this chart that we divided our testing between standard footage and VR footage. And the difference between each was not actually all that significant. So what we can do is just look at the overall average. Looking at that, you can see that our PC workstation that is half the cost of the Mac Pro should be able to render previews about 22% faster. And the higher end PC should be able to render previews about 43% faster. Now the next thing we want to talk about is exporting, which is actually where we spent the bulk of our testing. Now we looked at a range of footage including 4K, 6K, and 8K with about six different codecs. On the export side, we looked at 1080p, 4K, and 8K, again, across multiple codecs. Now one thing we wanted to make sure we tested was VR or 360 degree footage. Now this isn't quite mainstream yet, but it's gaining in popularity and we really see a big future in VR. So we wanted to make sure we included it in our testing. If we take a look at our chart, you can see that there's quite a bit of performance difference depending on the export settings we used. In the end, if you average all of our results, we found that our more affordable PC should be able to export about 34% faster than the Mac Pro, while our higher end PC should be able to export about 52% faster. Now putting this in terms of time savings, if you have a project that is gonna take 30 minutes to export on a top of the line Mac Pro, you should be able to get that down to about 20 to 22 minutes depending on which PC you use. Of course, that's just an average. In the worst case, the higher end PC should be able to finish that 30 minute export in about 23 minutes, but in the best case, it should be able to do it in around 17 minutes. The next thing we want to talk about is warp stabilize. Now this is something that we hear quite a few complaints about just because it takes so long to run. And it's actually something that we did a little bit of unique testing on. Uh, the first way we tested it was just to apply the stabilize effect to a clip like normal and time how long it took to finish. The second way we tested was we took our test clip and we divided it into two, four, eight, and 16 sections, and then applied the warp stabilize to all of those sections at the same time. And we did that because warp stabilize normally only uses one or two CPU cores. So the 12 or eight or 10 CPU cores in our PC workstations aren't really used to their full effect. But by dividing the clip up into multiple sections and applying the effect to all of them, we kind of brute force Premiere into using all of the cores in either of these workstations. And what that does is it makes the warp effect finish much faster than it would if you just applied it to a single clip like normal. We only tested with two different types of footage because we found that the codec doesn't actually make much of a difference in terms of how long it takes to perform the warp stabilize. 
the resolution is by far more important. Another thing we found is that at 8K, the Mac Pro actually does pretty well. Our more affordable PC in this case was only around 9% faster than the Mac Pro, and our higher end PC was about 13% faster. However, at 4K, the performance difference is quite a bit larger. In this case, our affordable PC is 27% faster, and our higher end PC is 39% faster. What this means is that on average, you're probably looking at about an 18% performance gain by using our PC that is half the cost of the Mac Pro, or a 26% performance gain by using our higher end PC. Again, in terms of time saved, if a warp stabilize takes 30 minutes on a Mac Pro, you should be able to get that down to about 24 or 25 minutes by using a PC workstation instead. The last thing we want to talk about is live playback performance. Now this is something that's actually really hard for us to test because there's such a wide range of footage and effects that you might use in your project. And what we opted to do was to simply look at the maximum preview resolution we could play without dropping any frames across 10 different source footage. Compared to our more affordable PC, the Mac Pro actually holds up very well. There are times when our PC can actually play some footage at higher resolution, but there's other times where the Mac Pro can play at a higher resolution. So it's really equivalent between these two machines. On the other hand, our higher end PC was definitely able to play at higher resolution more often than the Mac Pro. The main difference came from red 4K footage with Lumetri Color, where our high end PC was able to play at full resolution while the Mac Pro was limited to half resolution. Another time the PC was better was with 8K ProRes 4444 footage, either with or without Lumetri Color. In this case, we were able to play at 1 8th resolution on PC, but the Mac Pro was not able to play even at 1 16th resolution without dropping any frames. Since the Mac Pro is about four years old now and about two generations behind the hardware in our PCs, it shouldn't really be a surprise that our systems are able to outperform the Mac Pro in Premiere. What we really hope to show in our testing is exactly what kind of performance difference you might be looking at if you decided to make the move from the Mac Pro to one of our PC workstations. If we look at a very broad overall average across everything we talked about in this video, if you made the move from the Mac Pro to one of our PCs that's about half the cost, you should be looking at about a 25% performance bump. And if your budget is a bit larger, our $6,400 PC should be pretty significantly faster than the Mac Pro. You're looking at around 50% faster exports, 40% faster preview rendering, and around 25% faster warp stabilization times. The very last thing we want to mention is that if you are thinking about making the move from Mac Pro to PC, definitely check out our systems that are designed specifically for Premiere Pro. We spend a lot of time and effort doing in-house testing to make sure that we sell only the optimum hardware for Premiere, and we share all of that knowledge with you in the form of hardware articles. In fact, if you are considering moving to PC, we even have a very extensive list of frequently asked questions that we have heard from our customers over the years. And if you have any questions about our workstations and what they can do for you, don't hesitate to contact us. We're happy to help you make the move from Mac to PC, no matter what your experience level is with Windows or PCs in general.